Hello everyone, welcome to Web Dev Fundamentals Workshop Lesson 2. Today we will be looking at how to add images and links to our web page. We will also look at how to create a form and the different ways you can collect inputs from a user. So we are going to start where we left off in Lesson 1 and we are going to see how to add images to our web page and how to style them. Since we are using the free version of CodePen, we are not allowed to upload images to the CodePen service directly. So what we have to do is that we either have to use GitHub repositories or like Google Drive, where we upload the images there and then use their sharing link to link them here in the CodePen. So for today's lesson, we're gonna use Google Drive. If you want to use the GitHub repositories as well, there's a guide that would be linked in the description box below. You could follow that, but I'm just going to show you how to do that, do this in Google Drive. So what you do is that in your Google Drive, you go and you make a folder, upload all your images that you want to use on your web page in this folder. And what you do is that you click share and make sure that the access is to anyone with the link and then copy it. Now, when you copy this link, you have to embed this link so that it's publicly available. Um, what I mean by that is that you'll see it in a second. So to embed the Google Drive link that you have just copied. Um, you go to this website, which will also be linked in the description box below. And you come here and you paste. The link that we just copied for the image that we want to use and you click I'm not a robot and you generate it now what will it will give you is like these are like the two images uh, sorry two links and we're going to use the direct image link you just copy it now if you actually want to see what's the difference between this link is that this shows you just the picture where CodePen can go and just access this picture. But if you use the original link, it will give you somewhat like this where you have to open them with the third party apps and stuff like that. So CodePen cannot actually work with this where it's like, yeah, not just the picture fully opened. So that's why you embed the picture, if that makes sense. Uh, embed the link for the picture, in, I mean. So yes, so now after we have embedded link we copy it and we come back to code pen here now that we have the link let's say i want to add the image after the heading so what i would do is i would use the image tag which is these brackets and image and then src which is like for like the source and then equals and then double quotes now inside these double quotes is where i would be pasting my embed link and if you wait yeah, this is assuming that you have the autosave on so that it automatically refreshes. You will get this image that we just saw here. But as you can see, this picture is too big and we would like to resize this. So like we set our own dimensions and borders and whatnot. So for that, you would come to CSS, you would say image, yeah, which is like to style the image and then space, curly brackets, enter. Now, we can say with, oh, sorry, yeah, with colon, um, let's say I want 400 pixels, semicolon, and then I'd say height, colon, um, let's say 300 pixels, semicolon. Now, you can see that it has automatically readjusted to what we have defined. Um, you can also say this in terms of percentage. So it's like 40% of the width of this screen, I guess. Yeah, as you can see. And let's say you don't want to change the uh, uh, width and height ratio of a picture and you don't know what to set the height for, but you just know like a requirement for, oh, sorry just a second yeah you know the width but you don't want to change the this proportion you can just say auto and it will keep the 
ratio and set height to yeah respective of whatever you give the width for um this is how you do this now let's say for example you want to make it fancy and you want to add borders simple you just say border and then you say let's say 10 pixel this is like the width of the border you want to add and say a solid line and so the default color would be black, but you can always specify any color that you want and this would be in the rgb values so i'm just gonna but in like in like the hexadecimal values so let's say uh i don't know um let's say pvp i don't know what color that would actually be okay so it's like a gray color so yeah you can do that you can also do image hover which is basically when you hover your mouse over the image you can see some you can apply like a different set of styles so okay to make this clear let me remove the border so you can actually see the changes and so you say image colon hover and then yeah curly brackets after a space and then you say let's say try box shadow to give like a shadow effect on around the border of the image so for that they're like first four parameters are like the horizontal offset where it's like you want it to be the right hand side left hand side of the shadow and then the, there's a vertical offset and then like the blurring radius how much you want it to be and yeah the spreading radius like how far do you want the shadow to spread across to and if you do that then you define the color of this effect that you want in like rgba a stands for alpha and the alpha values go from 0 to 1. 0 is like the full like opaque opaque yeah it's like not transparent at all and then one is like fully transparent like fully white you won't be able to see the color kind of thing um yeah so this is basically like the opacity of the border that's what the alpha stands for and let's say i want i'm just gonna assume a random color and then let's say 0 0.5 for the alpha and yeah if we do that and this is applied when i hover over it you could see that it's a blue let me actually make this a little bit small oh, okay um yeah this is better so yeah as you can see the thing when i put my mouse over here it gives a different style so this is how you add an image and style them but of course there are many other ways where you could how you could style an image and some of them would be mentioned in the css cheat sheet but now moving on to the second part of the lesson where you would be adding links to phrases or words um, so that you could redirect users um, yeah out of your web page so for that you would be using the anchor tags and that would be a and then href equals to quotes and then you close this bracket here uh, let's say this is for another picture um, and then you close the tag like this now inside these double quotes is where you would be adding your link where you want your users to be redirected to so i'm going to be pasting a link which is like the first picture but for it's a different picture this time so if you go down whatever we wrote here this is for another picture this entire sentence it's like linked to image so when i open yeah it will go there basically um so that is how you do for like uh, uh yeah so this is how you do it for a website if i want to do it for a email id this is how i would do it pgrf equals to so instead of 
just starting out with the link oops sorry yeah instead of just starting out with the link you would say mail to colon and then double quotes and yeah, whatever email id you guys have and then close the bracket and say this is an email and yeah you close the tag basically and yeah it should take you to the email id but that's how you do it now moving on to the third segment of our lesson we will look into how you can collect different inputs from the user this could be a text box a date a time a file things like that um so for that the syntax would be input tag i'm sorry <laughs> input type um equals double quotes and you close it and basically literally that is what it is so it could be a text box and if you see yeah there is a text box now, okay now the thing is um i don't want this to be a different paragraph but i don't want this to be in the same line either so what i would do is that i would add a break so that this goes to a different line basically yeah um so instead of a Text bo uh, sorry, text box, you could do a text and text box. <laughs> Instead of text, you can do tech and it will change here. And if you want, okay, you know what? Copy, paste, um, and uh, yeah, that's the same for date and time. Mm. Yeah, it's a text box, the date you could select it here, and the time you can select it here, basically. This is how you do it. Let's say, for example, you want to add a label to these things, and there are different ways to do it, but the way that I find them neater is this. So to do that, let's say, let me add a break first. And uh, let's say label. And I would say, I would give the, yeah, the name of the label that you want to give, let's say, hmm, label number one. And then in the second one, I would say input type equals, let's say a checkbox, why not? Um, and name equals. You close the brackets and then you end the label as well right now when you do that you can see here label number one with the text box you can do the same for like a text box anything basically if you want to add a label and it will do that for you yeah um this is how you do it and if you want to say if you're creating a form, let's say, what you do is that you add all these input types and labels between these two tags. So form here and then at the end, form. Yeah, that's how you create a form in HTML. You just add these two and then whatever you want to create the form, the content of the form goes between these two tags basically, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the form tags. Um, yeah, that's how you do it. And let's say you want to create a submit button for this. To do that, you would say the same thing, but wait. No, 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 no. Let's copy this. Mm. And I would say submit. But this would just be a button without written anything on it. So I want to label it as submit as well. Ah, oh, wait. Submit. Right. And if I do that, you could see a submit button here. Of course, I can add it. But yeah. 
that's how you do it and then you can just submit oops yeah but then this is the problem we haven't linked anything to the submit button so it's like a yeah but basically oops um yeah um yeah okay but yeah so you have to just link it and then when you submit it you can either link it to your web page again so that when you click submit it just refreshes and then everything else is like a null value but that's how you do it um yeah so this is how you create a form now moving on to the last segment of our lesson um all these input types can also be used to constrict the data types that you want to. So let's say, for example, you want to collect an email ID from your user, like it's a registration or a sign up form. So what happens is that instead of just giving the, it um, as a text box, you can actually put it as an email. So what this would do is that the web browser would actually check for the user input and it would check if there is an at symbol dot com and if like the gmail yahoo whatever it's like a legit name it's like a proper name so that it's actually uh, an email id and not like some random i don't know alphanumeric text um which is not like a valid email id so that's how you do it and let's say sometimes you want to ask your user to type in their password for security reasons what you could do is that yeah, again, this is again like password. Um, when you do this, sorry, yeah. When you do this, whatever, it doesn't show you the actual letters, what you're typing, it just shows them as a dotted symbol. Like here, if I type in for a normal text box, it will actually show me what I'm typing. But here it will just be dotted thing. So that's like another way where you could constrict your data types. But yeah. That was it. I hope this was helpful. Um, thank you for staying until the end of this lesson. And if you do have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Or there's also a Discord server, which will be linked in our description box. And you could reach out there too. But thank you for staying. And I hope this was a helpful lesson. Bye bye.